Hello, hello. Today I've got with me uh, the great Derek Pollard, who has become a good friend of mine over the past several months. Uh, he's a PhD, he's a copywriter, and he's just an all-around good, supportive, uh, kind person. So I'm really happy to have you uh, today for this little member spotlight that we're going to do together. Thanks, Andrew. It's great to be here. Yeah. All right. So this is the routine. I'm going to start off by asking you, Derek, if we met for the first time on an elevator and I said, nice to meet you, Derek, what do you do for a living? You can now give me your best elevator pitch in 60 seconds or less. Well, I'm going to sprinkle the fairy dust as Will Ferrell does in old school. <laughs> so, um, so here's the thing. We're operating in a relational economy at this point. If you're still prioritizing conversion over connection, you're missing the mark because you're going to have to continue to sell instead of your prospects showing up ready to become your clients. That's why Constell or Creative doesn't focus on B2B or B2C marketing. It's H to H marketing because people connect with people being people. Scene. <laughs> you did it in 40 seconds. So <laughs> nicely done. Um, all right. So I like that distinction between it's not B2B, it's not B2C, it's H to H, which human to human connection. Uh, so what I come away with, had I just met you on an elevator, you know, you're in marketing, but your focus is on relationships and how to communicate that, not so much transactional. And that's really kind of the way to set yourself apart there. Is that a good well, I, I, I think that that's true. And, and uh, I know we'll get into this, but I, I, it's particularly true for financial advisors, right? Who are in the people mm. business. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a lot of confusion around that, both for prospective clients and for advisors themselves. There's a tremendous focus on the money, on numbers, mm -hmm. um, but the truth of the matter is that expertise is table stakes at this point. People want to know who you are, where you're coming from, and why what you do matters. And if you're not appealing to that very human-centric notion of finance, of wealth building, if you're not considering a person's well-being, then again, you're missing the mark. And, and mm -hmm. you're also having to then compensate. But you're basically spending money twice, right? You're spending money on your marketing, which is sending out messaging that isn't appealing to your ideal client, which yeah. means <clears throat> you then need to not only market, but you need to follow that up by selling as opposed to creating messaging that builds and nurtures relationships over time. So there is a bit of a patience game in play here, but you're also letting people know who they're going to meet on that discovery call. So by the time they show up, they're already ready to work with you. Right. Right. So right. it bypasses, it bypasses that secondary step of having to sort of justify your marketing at the stage of discovery when you're building and nurturing relationships. And when you're doing that thing that I'm so glad to see happening in that industry, and I think happening more and more for brands is the personability and the relatability, right? bringing you to what you do so that your prospects are inclined to do business with you because they're not having to play a guessing game. Yeah, and I think that human to human thing uh, I mean, that's always been important, obviously, but it's going to just become more so with the advent of technology, AI, all these other things that are happening. And I like that point that like you can do it twice. You can market and then you can sell or you can just market really well the first time <laughs> and reduce the need to sell. So let's move on to our next little section here. I'm going to ask you three questions that you have kindly provided me. Uh, you're going to offer three answers and you're going to do each of them in three minutes or less. Or at least that's what we're shooting for. Um, all right. So here's the first one. I think this is interesting. As I mentioned at the outset, Derek, you, um, or should I say Dr. Derek, you're a PhD. 
Um, you have a PhD in English, but you're saying that you don't need a PhD in English to create great content, which I think is true. Uh, so what's the, what's the value add then? <clears throat> well, great question. <laughs> um, I, again, I, I think that there are a lot of misconceptions around the work that content creators, copywriters, marketers do. I think so much of the emphasis is placed on the deliverable, right? So much of the emphasis is placed on the content itself, but the real magic happens in getting from zero to done. And one of the things, and, and this is true. I mean, you know, this yourself, you create consistently engaging content that duck meme the other day is still with me. <laughs> well, thank you. I wish I could say I created that myself. I just, <laughs> I just see well, funny things and reshare them. Well, and you do a great job in, in that in a sense speaks to, to the, the question and the answer here. There's a lot of deep listening that goes on. And so much of what goes into the tagline, the headline, the compelling content, the engagement marketing that you're aiming for has to do with research, organization, deep listening, knowing where to go, right? And how to put things together. And that is one of the things that is drilled into us during that incredibly arduous rigorous process of earning a PhD. Um, it, it's all about research. It's all about knowing where to go. And it's all about, it's all about cultivating that conversational sensibility that allows you to go through the process of educating your audience while at the same time, listening and speaking directly to their questions and concerns. And so, Again, it is a truism and I'm thrilled to see content creators constantly weighing in, drawing our attention to the work that they're doing, right? But at the same time, as I am seeing routinely on LinkedIn, other social channels, the way marketing is being done across industries, there's a real attention to the work that goes on behind the scenes. And you see that, uh, in fact, I kind of find myself spinning one of the broken records that I routinely play the past couple of days, the greatest compliment that you can receive as a copywriter, a content creator, as a content marketer is my kid could do that. Right. And I think that that's one of the things getting so deep into a subject like the English language, which. I think we all know this is extremely messy, yeah. is extremely complicated and is extremely difficult to play instead of having it play you. I think that, that being able to pull the curtain back and to arrive to a headline, a post on LinkedIn, above the fold content on your website, that is so compelling. You almost read right past it. That is a skill set that's going to be in increasingly high demand and the people who are doing it well I, I just want to give a shout out to every single one of them phd or otherwise right um because you're doing something that that really is extraordinary um and you had raised the point before about the unmitigated rollout of artificial intelligence and generative ai um i think as you'd said about the relationship economy the same holds true here um, you know, I think we use a word like authenticity to the point where it begins to lose its meaning, but we're really to lose authenticity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> paradox um, for you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I think the truth of the matter is what we're really talking about there is your ability to listen and to speak toward you know, your ideal clients concerns and questions. And if you're showing up and doing that consistently, you're delivering quality and the value add there in, in terms of, of whatever, you know, follows your name in your headline on whatever social channel you're most active on. It, it's just knowing that, that there's more to it and really been, being able to finesse the work that you do. Right. And so 
that immersive experience with the English language to me is what you're getting when you're working with somebody who has an advanced degree. Nice. All right. Good deal. The immersive experience, I think, sums it up nicely. All right. Let's move on to our next one. What is going on with the name? Constellar Creative is your business name. So where did that come from? And how does that let people know more about uh, how you work? Well, <clears throat> The PhD isn't just in English, I'm also a poet. Um, and so creativity has been at the heart of the work that I've done over the course of my career, whether it's been in academia, whether it's been in marketing, whether it's been in editing and publishing. I, I, I really firmly believe that creativity means business. Um, and if you're missing out on that sense of serious play, um, I, I think you're going to wind up erring on the side of caution to the point where what you're saying gets lost because it's kind of boring. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's one of those things, getting back to that, that great compliment, my kid could do that. When we say that about an adult, what that actually means is that they have unworked a lifetime of learning and experience to get back to that spark that each of us has as children. When we don't, we don't fear taking risks and daring. We just explore, right? We find our way into stories and, and we have no idea where they're going to lead us. And that's thrilling. Um, so when we level what seems like a backhanded compliment <clears throat> or a dismissive insult, right? I can't tell you how many times I hear this when I'm in art galleries or museums. Oh, my kid could do that, right? At Jackson Pollock, that's just paint on a canvas. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're saying that Jackson Pollock, who was an adult, has managed to walk the process back that far and is unguarded in his enthusiasm to the point where he is doing something that hadn't been done in that way before, I, I think we've arrived to the point at which things really open up for us. Constantly. Right? from constellation, bringing points, nodes, people, ideas together so that much like with first gen, we build out community, we build out relationships, we give our prospects, our leads, our audience, the power to become co-creators to for themselves, draw the lines between those points. So that what we have, when we look at it, is a bunch of dots in the sky until we arrive to the point where we begin to draw those lines. We begin to tell stories. We begin to create a mythos. And that's the point at which relationships are founded. That's the point at which our stories, our histories, right, our personal narratives are nurtured. And that gives us the opportunity to really rethink how business is done, right? Instead of a, a, a competition in which we are trying to outcompete one another, we're always trying to outcompete ourselves and find ways to create connections and community so that everyone has an opportunity to thrive. So through through your efforts, you know, you start to connect the dots and the vision starts to become clear until you have this this aha moment. And that's going to be the thing that's going to draw someone to want want to do business with you because you've you've pulled that out of them. You've created that human human connection. Your content has drawn them in that way. Uh, that's awesome. So let's go into our third and final question then. So you often talk about the importance of shutting up, which there is a certain irony in saying that as a content marketer. So what's the, what do you mean by that when you say it's important to shut up? Um, you know what, interestingly enough, I had asked you because I was unfamiliar with the soundtrack we have going here, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. As we're recording. Uh, exactly. Right. It's like we're, it's like we're at Ibiza, right? <laughs> um, the thing is so much of marketing and, and we see this, right? For those of us who are on social, who live there, right? For those of us who are online, for those of us who are attending conferences, here's what we hear more often than not rise above the noise, right? Be louder, be bolder. And mm -hmm. there 
something to that. But here's the thing, particularly if we're emphasizing consistency over quality, right? Volume over value. It's just more noise. And I don't know about you, but I'm surrounded by it all day long. In fact, I try at times desperately to create a greater sense of quiet because it's in quiet that we have an opportunity to pay attention, right? And so, so many marketers are telling you to turn it up, right? To take it even past 11, right? Mm -hmm. Just get it above the noise. I think there's a different way to do it. And I'll share an anecdote that Anthony Bourdain shared about an event he had organized. It was a, it was a presentation that the chef Fergus Henderson was meant to deliver at the Culinary Institute of America. And Fergus Henderson, um, uh, has a Parkinson's. And so, um, speech and public appearances are, are complicated by that yeah. fact. Just before Henderson was set to take the stage at this event, Bourdain looks out over the audience and he says, what have I done? I've, I've set this guy up to fail, mm -hmm. right? Room full of young gung ho wannabe chefs. Most of he's, he's thinking to us most of whom don't even know who this guy is and he's going to show up and he's, they're going to malign him. They're going to ridicule him. They're going to tune out. Bourdain says the minute he walked on stage, you could hear a pin drop in that auditorium. And literally, people were leaning in because they didn't want to miss a single word that Henderson said during that presentation. Imagine that, being in a conference room full of hundreds of people, everyone being as quiet and still as possible so that they could lean forward to gain all of the wisdom and value. That example has always stayed with me because mm -hmm. that means successful marketing, that successful content creation. If your prospective client, if your audience, and I always like to think of, of all of these people that, that we're connecting with, not as followers, but as co-creators, if that connection is that strong and people feel compelled to lean into your content, you're doing something right. And that is so much more powerful to me than a megaphone, right? A, 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 a bang and stereo system, something that is trying to out volume, right? right. Out Let's quiet it down because that's where you're really going to create the connections that ultimately lead to the conversions. That really wow. Happen. Yeah, man, that's a really good uh, analogy there. And when you apply that to content in general, if you can get it to where your audience is leaning in and they don't want to miss a word of what you have to say, that's going to be a lot more valuable than an audience who's just having music blasted at them and, you know, <laughs> um, totally different dynamic there. So really appreciate your unique approach to how you're, you're thinking about content. I mean, that, that does seem like a way that a person uh, can really stand out from the crowd is, you know, when everyone else is zigging, you're zagging here. And that's, uh, that's good. So, all right, well, that's our time for today. So Derek, thank you so much uh, for joining me. Uh, hopefully this video will get uh, others the opportunity to get to know you a little bit better. If you'd like to get in touch with Derek, you can just go to constellarcreative.com. Uh, and of course you can send him a DM right here inside the community as well. So, I can uh, testify to just being a stand-up guy. So, Derek, thanks again, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds great. Andrew, thank you very much. This is a great series. All right. See ya.